Good morning. And welcome to the St. John Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We ask that all during the ongoing pandemic continue to use hand sanitizers and maintain a distance of two meters. The wearing of masks is strongly encouraged. Our gathering chant this morning can be found in your Catholic Book of Worship, number 437, Crown Him with Many Crowns, and our presider this morning is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Please stand. him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who set us free. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We may worthily enter into this celebration of the Mass. We pause to call to mind God's goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humanity, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, 
members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Son of man is come. 
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, Know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for everyone? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and prudent manager whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and if he begins to beat the other slaves, men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and in an hour that he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That slave who knew what his master wanted but did not prepare himself or do what was wanted, will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel passage ends with the phrase, from everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Uh, These words um, maybe should make each of us feel a little uncomfortable in terms of what we've been given by the Lord. Uh, When we look at the news and see what other people struggle with, uh, we're pretty well off. God has blessed us in many ways and we're required to use those gifts well so that when our time comes, we can give an accounting of them to the Lord. In the first reading today, in in a way, Paul is giving an accounting of what he's been doing. He talks about how he's a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and he has a commission of God's grace given to him for the people, and that he's a servant of the gospel. Each of us in our own life, within our own vocation, is called to do the same, uh, to recognize that through baptism we have been given a commission of grace from God and that we are called to be servants of his good news by the way we live and the love that we show others. In the opening prayer of the Mass today, we prayed, Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. As we continue in our Mass today, let us continue in that prayer, asking the Lord to help us to see what we are called to do today, and through this Eucharist to give us the strength to do what we have seen. With confidence in God's goodness, let us stand and offer to him our prayers of petition. Pray for the Pope and for all of our religious and civil leaders that they may recognize the great obligation they hold within their offices and that they may have the grace and strength they need to carry out their work well. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves and for all who have received the gift of faith that we may see today what the Lord wishes us to do and that we may have the strength and the will to do it. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and the suffering, for all those for whom today is a time of trial and difficulty, that in the midst 
of their difficulties, they may feel God's presence and his care for them. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Full of your glory, O Son of in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. (laughs) 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Paul of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion for those viewing online and for those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that you begin from the side sections, maintain a two-meter distance in the communion line, and sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. Thank you. Our communion hymn can be found in your Catholic Book of Worship, 602, Eat This Bread, 602. And I will raise you up on the last day. 
Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on your power path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of divine love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn this morning can be found in your Catholic Book of Worship, 533, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from this dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, oh now be extended, the fruits of our worship in all who believe. The seed of the teaching, receptive souls reaching, 